Hi, so this is the thing, it's pretty much generic UAV construction. The particular design of this plane is not quite important, in fact it's very modular and adjustable and whatever. But the materials and construction methods I used, basically, I think they are quite interesting and I wanted to share this. This design is optimized for a very quick production, it took me only one day while filming it to make this plane, and also for durability, because I crash it a lot. So here is some footage, this is actually a maiden flight. It is relatively stable, even though it could be even more with higher speed. This camera doesn't have any stabilization built in. Even though this was maiden flight, I quickly gained confidence and started flying close to objects and to the ground. Also what helped a lot was that this plane doesn't really want to stall. What I wanted to make was quote unquote cruiser, with quite long range, ideally. In this case I was flying 3S 3.3 mAh battery, and I can get 30 minutes flight time, this is 950 grams I think. So this is not really anything spectacular, but I am pretty happy with this actually. Now this is another location, and I never flew here, but I wanted to check this place out. I thought that there would be some lift when wind is blowing, but there was no wind. But here you can see as I am losing altitude, I am gaining speed and the plane is actually very stable here. Also forgot to mention that cruising speed of this plane is about 60 km per hour. It can go as low as 30 km per hour, but then it is pretty much stalling all the time. Which is not really that big problem, because as I said this plane doesn't really want to stall, so you can fly like that. So by changing angle of attack of main wing you can make this plane a bush plane, or like very very fast plane. I haven't tried optimizing for maximum speed with this plane. The previous one had different chord length, it was shorter, its cruising speed was about 80 km per hour, so this one would be probably a little bit slower. But then again, use more powerful motor and off you go. So here I tried to fly in quite high wind speeds, it was blowing about 50 km per hour. It was a lot of fun, it took some time to get used to flying sideways. But this plane is no glider, and since the wind speed is not constant, you can very easily stall it and crash. So I managed to destroy my camera, the antenna from receiver was snapped off, the video transmitter I did not find at all, so I don't have any at the moment, and I managed to bend the battery because it wasn't mounted flush. Since tail is mounted only on 4mm carbon fiber tubes, and they really snapped off, but they can be replaced easily. But any component that requires very high effort to make is pretty much intact. So for this crash I calculated the impact speed and it was about 70 km per hour, which is quite brutal. So as far as damage goes, you can see that the wing has been detached and you can repair this with hot melt glue gun. And the tail section can be repaired with a bit of CA glue and this is ready to fly again, really. The crash that destroyed all my electronics was another one and that must have been at much higher speeds than this. And still I would be able to fly again with minor repairs. Ok, so let's start with the construction. I am starting with wings because they take a lot of time to do and you can do stuff while they are being done. I have shown this process in previous video, but I guess it doesn't hurt to go over it quickly again. So as you can see I am using DIY profile cutter. The cutting wire is the same stuff you use for connecting servos to control surfaces. I am using pretty much basic construction grade polystyrene. Now since this is on inclined plane, you basically apply power and the wing cuts itself. For reference you can see my new bigger wing profile, versus the smaller one that I used previously. The problem I had with smaller one was that it stalls very easily when you load the plane too much, and that's not great. Ok, so first thing I want to do is to cut grooves for carbon tube reinforcement. Again I am using hot wire cutter, and I am doing this at 5cm and 15cm from wingtip. Then of course glue these tubes in place, I am using polyurethane fuming glue. Then I'm going to reinforce the polystyrene structure with this non-woven textile. This is a little bit unorthodox, but it works very well. Normally people use glass fiber and epoxy, but that is very heavy. And also the wing structure is very fragile, while this is quite elastic. To laminate this fiber on the wing, I'm using PVA glue. Just to demonstrate how this composite material acts, 
I bent this old wing to nearly 108 degrees and it pretty much springs back to its original shape. This really toughens the polystyrene much more than you would expect. So here I start laminating the wing. I'm doing this on piano stand because it is much easier to handle that way. I basically apply the PVA glue directly on the thing and coat with a roller or something like that and I do two layers. Then I use hair dryer to remove as much water as possible. This takes a lot of time and I wouldn't really recommend doing this by hand. Put the wing somewhere with the hair dryer blowing air on it and leave it for like hour or so. So when the wing has dried, remove the excess textile. Since I did pretty terrible job of wetting this, I am correcting some dry spots and things like that. But then it is not a completely terrible idea to apply like 5 or so layers at the edges of the wings because they get most impacts and most damage. Okay, so this wing is 1 meter by 20 centimeters and it weighs about 160 grams, which is not bad. Next I need to carve out ailerons and I would probably recommend different approach than I did here. I mean it works, but it is ugly as hell. So I marked 3 by 25 cm rectangles that I will cut out, but not completely, I am using this non-woven textile to act as a hinge. Now long term the durability of this type of hinge is quite questionable, I definitely would like use some more proper method. But with occasional repairs this can handle like daily flying for about 2 months, so it's not that bad. On the old plane the aileron was directly next to reinforcement tube, which is quite good because you can reinforce the joint there, but here it is not. Another thing that I goofed a little bit was that I made this cutout for servo, but then I realized that on this plane the reinforcement tubes are much more further apart, so I don't really have any way to mount this servo. So I came up with the idea to put two carbon tubes like this and it works quite well. Just this could have been done before the wing was laminated with the textile. But at least you can see that this construction method is quite forgiving. So I secured this with hotmail glue and I added glass fiber laminate board to which I will mount servo or well glue it. But yeah. So finally I will glue the servos in and that is basically done. Well, basically. Now I am looking at these cables, but I think it is probably best to do cabling after everything is like in place. And you can always add the next layer of like this cloth and more PVA glue. Next thing I want to make is these control horns. I think this is probably the best way to make this if you want to make them, that is. I have a lot of these glass fiber boards laying around, so I just make them. Though this method is a little bit silly because I have to shave this board a little bit. And this is because when I make a slit with saw, it just fits perfectly like into the slit. So when you have two pieces like this, you should align them so the angle should relatively match. Then glue them together with CA glue and this will pretty much be indestructible. To make a connection between the control horn and servo, I'm using this hardened steel wire. But chance of making two exactly same is quite low, so I will split it in half. Then the question of course is how do you like connect these together so you can adjust its length. So how about this? So I am using these wire terminals, we call it chocolate here, but without its plastic casing. I have seen people using heat shrink tubing and CA glue, but it didn't work very well for me. This method does provide very good mechanical connection and it is very small. So to finish this chapter, align the control horn with the servo and pierce it through the aileron or make some slit for it. Then apply your glue of choice, I guess hot mod glue is good enough and quick enough. Here I am doing a bit more cosmetic glue up, most likely because my laminating job was pretty shit. Then I drill a hole in this control horn, which probably I should have done before. And finally connect the control horn with servo with this wire. And that's about it I guess, job done. So I'd start preparing some lumber for the tail section. I am using 8 by 3 mm wooden quote unquote boards here. Overall dimensions for tail are 250 by 66 mm. So here are all the pieces I will need for tail wing. And to cover the surface I am going to use A4 laminating foils. 
So first I need to align these pieces and glue them with CA glue. The exact dimensions are not important. Now get new clean laminating foil, split it apart and put it with shiny side down. Then apply CA glue on the tail wing and glue it to the laminating foil. Then apply glue to the other side and bend the laminating foil over from one side to the other and glue that so that you have like nice radius in front of the, of the wing. Then you will need wooden stick with profile like this for the elevator and glue that to the laminating foil on one side so it forms a hinge effectively. This hinge will be much stronger than what I did on the ailerons. Finally you can remove all excess laminating foil. Here you can see how the hinge is working. It wouldn't be a bad idea to have same chamfer on the tail wing to allow for the greater range of movement. Then use a heat gun to shrink this foil. It shrinks just a tiny bit but the surface feels a lot nicer then. Then pretty much repeat the whole process for the horizontal stabilizer. The only difference in my case is that I'm not using rudder, so I can skip a lot of steps. I'm going to glue the servo on the tail wing. And this is the reason why I am using two spacers, not one in the center, so I can mount servo there. I guess you can mount horizontal stabilizer off center too, but that would look quite strange, right? Then I am gluing control horn, only this time I am using CA glue, because I am gluing directly to the wood and this is the strongest possible joint I can do. Then again connect servo to control horn. The next step is to attach horizontal stabilizer to tail wing. It is good idea to check if the elevator movement is not obstructed by this horizontal stabilizer. And if everything is ok, you can proceed to glue it. And I am using again hot melt glue. Then I am attaching reinforcements because otherwise this horizontal stabilizer would be easily broken. To make sure that these glued joints are as strong as possible I am remelting them with soldering iron. And this really is sufficient enough. Then I'm going to use this PVC psychedelic mat to elongate the elevator a bit. So I will cut 3cm wide piece. Then I will have to mark and make cutout for the control horn. Just make sure you are cutting it on the correct side because you will have to rotate this piece. And finally glue it with CA glue. Even though this joint is pretty good, I am still reinforcing this by making holes with soldering iron and then putting C drops of CA glue into each hole. Now final step is to attach carbon fiber tubes. So I will drill two small holes on each side, then put zip ties through these holes and carbon tubes through zip ties. It is important to reinforce this joint with hot melt glue even though I did not do it here. I am going to attach tail section to the wing now, so I need to make holes that goes under the reinforcement tubes. This can easily be done with soldering iron. I have set mine to about 170 degrees. And while I am at it, I am making holes to attach fuselage as well. So that is 25 and 6 cm spacing respectively. Then insert zip ties and connect the tail section. I am using small 3mm wooden spacers in the front and this is so the wing has positive angle of attack. Then I need to make sure that the horizontal stabilizer is aligned perfectly with the center of the wing. Also I would recommend once you align the tail section you should secure the carbon tubes with hot melt glue. Just glue it to zip ties. And that's pretty much it for now, we can move on to next section. Ok, so let's make a fuselage now. On the left side you can see very very old design that I eventually came up with. The foam block did provide quite a lot of reinforcement, but also took a lot of space. So I was able to remove it, but it's still not ideal. Just by the way, as this plane evolved, this part has changed a lot. Here I have experimented with using plywood and it's ok-ish, but it's not very good on this base plate, quote unquote. The problem is, as you can see here, that if something breaks, it delaminates the plywood and it's really not great. So instead of plywood, I am using this board, it is solid pine, 40 by 5 millimeters. At least I think it is pine, it could be large. 
Fun fact is that my very earliest designs had nothing else but this board directly attached to the wing. So here's the fuselage stripped of all hardware and earlier I had problems with this baseboard that it could crack because I did not reinforce it. So to demonstrate how repairable it is, I am disassembling it now and in very little time the glue will soften enough so I can pull it apart. But since I added these reinforcement wooden profiles on the bottom, I never managed to break it. In fact, I think this is the strongest element of the plane. Ok, anyway, here it goes. Ok, fine, now let's make a new one. Here I'm marking 4mm, which is boundary to cut for the tube that is attaching the wing to this fuselage. Again, I'm using hot mode glue everywhere here. But notice the orientation of the grain of this piece, even though this is plywood, but most of the grain is going 90 degrees to the baseboard. Otherwise, when you crash, this board could easily split and break apart. Then again, I will remelt every glue joint just to smooth it out and spread apart too. Then I will attach motor mount that I have reused. Then again, remelting and smoothing joints. You could, you could argue that this doesn't make any difference and you may be correct. I think this deserves more testing, but I don't really have time for this. I have only faith. So here I am marking where the wing attaching points will be and I am providing a little bit more support. Since I had some problems with wing detaching from the glue joints, I mean on the other hand, if this joint would be infinitely strong, then there is risk of damaging the wing spar, so here I am filing grooves for the carbon tube that will be attaching the fuselage to the wings. Though honestly, next time I will probably consider a different material, probably wood, because again, the adhesion is not great. And finally, attaching reinforcement for the base plate. This is probably twice as long as it needs to be because it always breaks about 5 cm behind the box section. But it's not like I have added 100 grams to this thing, right? Also I have realized that now I can smooth it out with hot melt glue gun instead of soldering iron. So I added back electronics and I drilled hole when I had to drill them and this is how this thing looks like. So let's attach this to the wings I guess, right? Well, first I have to make a cutout for the video transmitter antenna, which is easy enough. Then really just thread zip ties through the holes in the wing and attach the thing to the fuselage. And if you are using spacers to create angle of attack for the main wing, remember to put it also under a fuselage attaching point, otherwise you will end up with funny geometry. But of course we are not done yet, there are still some dangling wires. And since I am filming almost every detail, I may as well document this. So again, nothing special really here, where I need to make a hole in the wing, I am using soldering iron. This is the wire for the ailerons, and I am not even going to hide the wire in the wing itself, because I cannot be bothered. Then I need to connect wire for the elevator servo, which is very easy, there are a lot of attaching points. And I can turn the wire around this carbon fiber tube, which is quite handy. Then I need to make a hole for the antenna. Since one is flush with the wing, another should be at 90 degrees. This is a very secure way of mounting this antenna and I never had any problems with this way of mounting it, apart from two times that I did. Ok man, come on, come on, do, do you really want to include this shot? Really? Is it necessary? Fuck's sake. Ok, so, that was the last zip tie. And so, question is, how much? Well, so, ready to fly weight without battery is 580 grams. My target weight is below 1 kilogram, so I think this is quite okay. So, let's load this up. This is two cameras and my usual 3S 3.3 amp hours battery. Ok, let's swap the pack with lithium ion, 7 amp hours. And we are still under 1 kilogram. Ok, I hope I did not forget to mention anything important, if I did, look at the description, I would probably clarify some things there. And yeah, that's about it, so see you next time.